Hi everyone, I'm Barbara Beck and I'd like to welcome you to Current. The ladies and I have a wonderful program lined up for you today as we look for ways to be refreshed, renewed, and empowered. Today we're going to be talking about what a kingdom marriage is and how we can embrace that. What does the Bible teach about marriage and how a husband and wife should treat each other? Paul's teachings in Ephesians help us understand the comparison of the church being the bride of Christ and how we should be responding to each other as husband and wife. Well, for the husband, love your own wife as yourself, and for the wife, respect her husband. And, there's a little word in there, submit as to the Lord. That little word could be a stumbling block for so many women, submit. So, let's see what the current ladies have to say about kingdom marriages, about love, respect, and submission. Welcome, ladies. Glad to have you all here with us today. <laughs> Does anybody kind of balk at submission? I mean, we might as well get that on the table now and then we can go on to bigger and better things. But anybody, submit, is it okay? I mean, I think that oftentimes, I mean, much ado about nothing. I think that if, if you read the whole passage, it talks right. about um, husbands loving your wives as Christ loved the church. Well, Christ, there was, I mean, no greater love than Christ's love for the church. So right. if our husbands are really loving us in a way that is, like Christ loved the church. The whole submission word, I believe is, um, you know, I think it's, it's a matter of mutual respect yeah. and um, just working really well together and hard together. I mean, if, if my husband really loves me like Christ loves the church, I'm gonna have no problem. And he does doing what he might suggest that right. we do or right I, but we really do work as a team right with giftedness in either area, in yeah. lots of areas right anybody else i have no problem with it which a lot of people find shocking because i'm <laughs> very strong will yes. very you know yes. successful but i think if i think about it long and hard that verse saying yeah but they have to love us like christ of the church so women we're good um, <laughs> but then i think about my mom and how much she um, respected and loved and submitted to my father well um, but not laid down and mm -hmm. like a doormat too um, but she used to say to me there are times in your marriage man where you might not feel like going out to dinner or whatever. But if your husband would like you to do that, you really just need to do it. And I remember thinking, that's kind of weird, like, you know, <laughs> but as I grew up and got married and I did understand it, um, I think especially if you're a strong woman, you really need to make sure your husband feels like he is the head of your household and that mm -hmm. your strong personality is not you know, overtaking that. And so um, I just, I have no problem with it, but I think it's probably because my mom modeled it well. Mm -hmm. And um, and again, the husbands have such a big responsibility towards us, so. Right. Yeah. You talk about big personality. <laughs> <laughs> and she looks over here at me like. Do you? Well, l l let me just tell you, this is really funny. Uh, we've been married for almost 21 years. And there were people that were taking bets, Barbara, when we got married. <laughs> wow. That it was going to last about six weeks. Really? Because I have such a big personality and I am opinionated and strong willed. And, and that it really is me. If I believe something, that's why we like I each believe other. what mm -hmm. I believe. And we love that about you. You know, Deborah. but that, that's just the truth. Yeah. However, we don't have a problem in the area of submission in our marriage. but And people that thought that it wasn't going to last, ha, 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 ha. Because yeah. here we are, 21 years later, there and we're go. both still happy and smiling. Now, will I say that there, are, there aren't times when I don't necessarily agree with what my husband wants to do? Certainly there are times when I don't agree. And I state my opinion, what I would like to see happen, and then I respect his right as the leader of our house to do what he feels is best for us. Mm -hmm. And I don't do it um, in fear, feeling like he's gonna just run over me because I know that this man loves me right. and he respects yeah. me. And most of all, he loves the Lord. Yes. Yes. And he's not worried about problems out of Deborah. He's worried about problems out of the Lord mm -hmm. if he doesn't do what is right, right in terms of taking care of us and loving us and things of that nature. So I don't have a problem with submission and you know, it's easy to, to respect somebody much easier or submit to somebody when you know that they love the Lord. And they right. have your best interest that's at right. heart. When you know that they love the Lord and that right. they are submitting to God. Yes. Because that's the real deal with submission. Mm -hmm. I'm following him right. as he's following Christ. Right. Yeah. 
So. Well, let's hear from Carolyn, and then we're going to talk about what happens when that husband is not that. Because this whole yeah. panel, we're very, right. very blessed in that we have godly men mm -hmm. that lead us. And, and that's actually what I was going to switch to, because it, we we are abnormal. We are. We really are. And, and I don't. I know none of us take that for granted. Not one yeah. day that I wake up and my husband leans over and says, how are you? What can I do to help you today that I don't go, thank you, Jesus? Mm -hmm. Because there is so many women that I know we all talk to on a daily basis that the husband is cruel. Mm -hmm. yeah. The husband does not care. I mean, I just, one of the girls, that, you know, a good friend of mine was just telling me in the past two days, you know, her husband's just checked out of the marriage and she's like, I want to be there. And, you know, that's when the submit word really comes in because mm -hmm. how, how do I live the life and model Christ when I'm getting nothing in return? Because it's back to what we were talking about earlier. We're selfish beings. Sure. We really only want to give to somebody when it really is convenient for us. It's easy. It's hard to love somebody when they're really not giving love back. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it, it just really is. And so, you know, to me, I think that word submission, I, I just read a story about this one woman who she had got saved. She was over in another country and, um, her husband was a big drinker. And so he would go out and get drunk. And so, but he says, my wife, she'll give me, she's on this new thing and she'll do whatever she, you know, whatever I ask her to do. She said, he said, so come on home with me tonight. He said, and all of you come and it doesn't matter what time it is. She'll cook us a big meal. So all these guys who had been drinking together, they all went into the house and said, she said, hi, honey, I'm glad you're home, even though they're all drunk. And he says, we want you to cook us a meal. So without complaining, she went and cooked him the meal. And all of a sudden, they went to sit down, and one of the guys, even though he's half drunk, looked and said, I ain't eaten this meal. Mm. He said, and how dare you make your wife, who is this kind to you, how lucky are you that you have a woman this kind? He said, I can't eat this because you're just treating your wife wrong. Mm. And the man went under such conviction that he went and he apologized to her. Now, I'm not saying it happens that way all the time, but it is living that life that we do what's right even when it's not convenient. Yeah. And you know, that it, that's, yeah. that's convicting to me because it's easy for us to say, yeah, do what's right when everything's perfect. Right. But these women who are really out there right now, who are being mistreated that the husband tells them they're losers, you know, some of them are being abused, yeah. which we all don't stand for that whatsoever. Right, because there's support. there's a difference between the word submission yes. and subservient. Mm -hmm. I'll do a little vocabulary lesson here. Thank sub you. means under. Mm -hmm. Sub, if you're under the mission, then you're under a husband whose mission is to love you as Christ loved oh, the church. I like that. So when but when you're subservient, you you're under someone who is not necessarily serving the Lord, but he's expecting you to serve yes, him. Mm -hmm. And a good Christian man is one who is a servant leader. He leads, and then you want to serve that person. You want to go along with that person in his mission. So I think sometimes a woman maybe who's not as mature in her walk or hasn't learned yeah. as much about the Bible will hear submit, and she balks at it because she thinks it means subservient, and we are never called to be subservient. I like that. That's yeah. great. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. So how can we help those listeners out there today who don't have the godly men? And at what point do you need to leave, if ever, a marriage that is not um, maybe going to be heading in a kingdom relationship? Well, I think anytime there's abuse, I mean, I think anytime, don't you ladies mm -hmm. agree, anytime that a man lay a hand on you, or even, I have to tell you something, I think even the verbal, mm -hmm. I think you have to be real careful because yeah. sometimes I think that can be what it's doing to the children. Right. I think you have to look at some of that and go, you know, it's not that you're leaving, but sometimes you need to tell them, you know, I'm going to step out for a little bit. Will you go get some help? Because this is not healthy for anybody. It's not healthy for the children. It's right. not helping. Don't you think that? Well, when your life is in danger or the children's yeah. lives are in mm -hmm. danger, then there you, you have sure. every reason to walk out of that relationship. It doesn't mean that it can't be restored because God can do the impossible. But um, I think we need to be wise. Yeah. And um, just, you know, if, if your life is in danger, you have a right to at least... Uh, get your children and yourself safe, mm -hmm. right? For sure. mm -hmm. Or if you have a husband that is not being faithful to the marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These what does days, the Bible teach about that, Deborah? Well, that's the one time for mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. that you're able to say, I'm no longer going to be in this marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's just not healthy <laughs> in this day and age mm -hmm. for you to be in a marriage where your partner is sleeping around. Mm -hmm. um, one, it's completely disrespectful. And not just to you, but to God, right. because that's just not the way God intended for, for marriage to be. 
And so, yeah, I agree. If you're in a situation where you're being abused verbally or physically, or you have a spouse that is not committed to the marriage, that, that it, those are exit points. Mm -hmm. It's like, if this is someone that is not willing to cut off those rela that relationship or those relationships that aren't in line with what the Word of God says, then you don't have a marriage. There's, there's not much of a marriage So there. what should we be doing to uh, foster kingdom marriages? We all have been married for a good length of time. What are some of the tools and strategies that you're using right now to make your marriage a better place? Well, I mean, listen, marriage is hard work. I, I think we all know that. And I think for, for some of the younger viewers, perhaps marriage, <laughs> come, when you're in love, when you meet this person and you're in love and things seem so wonderful and so easy and just you're filled with all these emotions, um, which is great. And it's then a super season. Then you get married and they season. don't put the, the cap on the toothpaste. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Or they put the toilet right. tissue on the right. thing they backwards. Do, they do all sorts of things that were cute oh. when you were dating and maybe not so cute. Um, but marriage is work. And so mm -hmm. I think that love is a decision. I don't mm -hmm. think it's an emotion. I think right. it's a decision to faithfully love your spouse every day, to show up, to respect one another, to serve one another, to help one another, <clears throat> to laugh together. I think that that's something that I never want to lose is the ability to laugh with Chris for us just to have fun together because mm -hmm. life's so serious mm -hmm. as it is, but mm -hmm. to be able to laugh with your spouse to pray together and read yes. the Bible together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think those are great gifts that we can give our kids um, and model what a healthy marriage right. looks like. I think there's a big difference too between just marriage and Christian marriage. And I think our intent here is really to talk about kingdom Christian marriages. Christian kingdom but, marriage. but give, yeah. Maybe give an, like a definition of kingdom of marriage. Of a kingdom because marriage? That, that's not, I don't believe it's not a phrase that well, a lot of people use. Well, what I was right? going to say is this. Um, for me, and people don't like it when I say this, but no is a real word. And when I say no is a real word, for, for a single woman, you don't have to say yes just because they ask. Mm. Just because someone proposes to you, you don't have to say yes to that. And if you want a kingdom marriage, it has to be built on kingdom principles, mm -hmm. which means I'm not going to get hooked up with some guy that is not committed to his relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. If he's not committed mm -hmm. to his relationship with the Lord, the likelihood that he's going to be committed to you in marriage yeah. is pretty darn slim. Right. And so in a lot of cases, you can just, you won't have, probably won't have the likelihood of you having certain issues won't even be there if you start the marriage off with the right foundation. Mm -hmm. Right. The Bible clearly says not to be unequally yoked mm -hmm. with an unbeliever. So you can't have a, a kingdom marriage unless both people are committed to living their life according to the right. word of God. Where Christ is central. Where Christ is right. central. And if you're married and because uh, a lot of times people get married and they're not they're not Christians, they're not saved. Then, then you have a little bit of a pro can have a little bit of a challenge because now you're trying to ha have a marriage and you're, you're living it based on the principles of the world. Mm -hmm. Divorce, divorce, 50, over 50 percent of marriages end in divorce. You start talking about second marriages, that number is about 60, 65 percent. So the likelihood that you are going to have a successful marriage and one that has longevity is very slim mm -hmm. until you, unless you commit to something that is going to give you the foundation that you need to be able to build that life. And, and even at best, it's still difficult. Do you think most people go into marriage being committed to having it last forever? That's what, it's funny um, you said that, because that's what I was going to say. I think most people now get into marriage going, well, if you if don't make me last, happy, yeah. and really, it's if you don't give me what I need, or if I get a little uncomfortable here, I'm just moving on. Right. And, you know, I always have a saying that if grass looks greener on the other side, be careful, it might just be a septic tank underneath there. <laughs> and, you know, it's like a I was telling one, isn't it true? So good. But it is true. And you know, I heard this the other day. It says, you know, if we as married people would keep courting, it'd keep more marriages out of court. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I don't know. I don't know if I really think that people, because if you look at the statistics, there are less people getting married. Mm -hmm. They don't want to get married. They don't mm -hmm. want a commitment. Yeah. I think innately we know that marriage was intended to be a one-on-one -on -one yeah. lifetime thing. You have people now, they don't need to get married. We can just live She's together. Right. And when I'm it's tired of you, true. it's over and I move on to the next one. So I think most people, 
that make that commitment, I think they want to believe that it's going to work. That it's going to work. Maybe. Well, I, th- I think they do. And I don't know. my husband and I met when we were high school. We were high school sweethearts, and um, both of our parents are still married, and um, both of our parents are believers. And so, um, divorce wasn't even an option. Not an and option. so, I think that is part of the problems. If you're a Christian and you um, believe, then you it can't even be an option. Right. Because you know, I heard somebody say if they cheat on you, and and I've seen marriages where their a spouse has gone astray, but if you both are believers and there, there can be repentance and there yeah. can be there wholeness, can be. Yeah. you know, yeah. and so, um, so, but the problem with our society is we're such a quick throw it away type thing that I think that mm-hmm. whole, and I, it's so, so interesting true. you, you said that fewer people are getting married, but the divorce rate's still the same. Mm-hmm. So look mm-hmm. at that, you know, mm-hmm. so it's still happening so prevalently. And we, mm-hmm. I think you just have to, it can't be an option mm-hmm. if you're a believer. And that was us. Before we got married, mm-hmm. we literally sat down and had a conversation and we agreed that divorce was not an option for us. Now, how do you make that decision before you've ever said, I do? It's, it was, it's based on our faith and what we believe right. Right. about Christian marriage. So, but I, I didn't make that decision with somebody that I couldn't respect. Mm-hmm. I, I made the decision with somebody that I knew, with somebody that had a track record, mm-hmm. somebody that I, I really felt in my heart of hearts that I could trust. And I've said to people any number of times, I really think if my husband had an affair, I would just be like, how in the world did that happen? Because I know <laughs> who he is and I know how he is. Mm-hmm. Right. And so in my mind, that's like, there, that, there's no way, not knowing his character. You don't character. think the enemy's out there trying to make that happen? I trying think to destroy enemy, Deborah's I think, marriage? I think that, Barbara, that's a whole nother show. <laughs> we, can have, we, can have a, we can have an entire show about how the enemy has tried and continues to try to destroy Deborah's marriage. Mm-hmm. But I'm not married to the enemy. Mm-hmm. I'm married to Alan Wiggins. Mm-hmm. And I know this person and I know his character. And I really believe that it is more about him honoring the commitment that he made yes. to God right. Right. and not just the commitment That's he made so to me. Good. Because on any given day, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm the perfect wife okay. and that I always do everything perfectly. He could very easily leave the house one day and, and not be very happy with me and go out and some woman mm-hmm. that is, you know, prettier and smarter and whatever is trying to get his attention. It happens all the time. Mm-hmm. But he has to be able to stand and say, you know what? It's not just about my wife. It is about my relationship with God. And so, but I knew that that's who he was before I said yes. I want to ask you a question that's going to be, it's kind of based on something that you said that love is a decision. Mm -hmm. Um, Is love by itself in a marriage enough? No? Why not? Well, because I think, have y'all read um, Bob Goff's book, Love Does? So it's a like love in action, but not just by itself, because I think love can be a feeling. And remember we said, above all, the heart is deceitful. Right. And so it has to be a, d- a daily decision, right, to make, follow in the Lord, right? We're going to make good choices and we're going to, um, and I do think that marriage, like we were talking earlier, you have to work on your marriage. You cannot, it is not like everything has, you know, you have to either go to um, a marriage retreat every once in a while, pray together, whatever it is, but it's love just by itself. I don't think is enough. Anybody else have an opinion on that? Well, I don't know. You know, for me, I- I'm just sitting here just thinking, I want people who are watching today to be encouraged today that <laughs> marriage really is a good thing, you know, because, and, and you know, because it is tough. It is, well, it is but tough, wonderful but too. it is wonderful. And I think that there is things, people who are watching that they're in bad marriages right now, there's hope. I mean, us that are sitting up here today, we're having a good time in marriage, but it's not because it just happens. Mm-hmm. And and for those who go, well, if I was married to a good man, no, maybe I'd have a great marriage. No, it doesn't. You have to be a good woman. It takes two to tango. And I told my husband one time, I said, I didn't get marriage. If if divorce is not an option, I didn't get into marriage just to survive. I want to thrive. I want to have fun. I want to, doesn't mean I enjoy every day. It doesn't mean everything is perfect, but it means today, what did I do to get up this morning to go, 
babe, what can I do to make your day better? And so I did. I made a little smoothie for him, tried to make sure the kids were okay. And my, I asked my daughter the other day, and that sounds... I did nothing. I needed that's okay. I got but my stuff and ran Patty, the night isn't over with. You can, you can still up. make it up. But you know, it is the truth. It's the little things that we can do. And I asked my daughter the other day, I said, honey, we were cooking, and I said, when you look at Dad and I's relationship, she's 12, I said, what do you learn from us that you want to take into maybe if you get married? And mm -hmm. she looked at me, she Dangerous. goes, well, first of all, Mom, she goes, you and Dad really love each other. Mm -hmm. And she said, and not only that, she goes, I'm not saying that you guys don't have your disagreements. She said, but compared to other families, you all don't really fight. She said, because I watch you, you communicate. And I think for people who are out there, you just got to make a list of really what you want your life to look like. Don't you think? And begin to put some action steps. There is so many good marriage mm -hmm. books that mm -hmm. I just want people to be encouraged. Don't just survive. You can really thrive. Mm -hmm. But you got to sometimes give a little. you got to think of the other well, person. Well, I wanted to ask that, too, but we're almost out of time. It. If we had one word that would describe what or, or, or would say why my marriage is working, what's the most important component in, mm -hmm. in your marriage? What's one word? And we're not going to say love because we yeah. know love's important, but it's not enough. Commitment. Commitment. Yeah. Deborah? Acceptance. Acceptance. I have a word, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> no, oh, um, oh, no, Does I didn't. Start with an S. No, <laughs> um, that's important. Too. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. Fun. That's fun. Kristen, encouragement. <laughs> encouragement. And I would say forgiveness. I think yeah. there's so many yeah, different components. Big. And that's I mean, big. Right? That's big. Thank you for sharing, that being good, so yeah. transparent. This is so wonderful to talk. We could do part two, part three, part four. We don't have enough time. <laughs> but Kingdom Marriages, viewers, is all about having Christ in the center of your marriage. We pray for you today that you'll have a godly marriage, that um, that you will be able to submit one to another in your marriage. And uh, we have more coming up. So don't go away. Stay with us. I was reading in Genesis about the covenant that God made with Abram. Once he tells him that his new name will be Abraham and Sarai's name will be Sarah, and it's time to expect Isaac, even though they're in their 90s, God gives Abraham one more little tidbit of instruction, circumcision. God tells Abraham that he and all of his descendants must now be circumcised. He instructs him to make sure that the newborn babies are all circumcised, but not just the babies, that includes Abraham at 99 and Ishmael at 13 years old. Oh boy, right? This one really got my mind spinning. I thought, where is that kind of covenant today? For goodness sakes, I think about my own family. When I tell my kids I want them eating wheat bread and not white, they look at me like I just took away their rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. When I say to people that my husband and I would rather our children marry as young adults, attend college with their wives and pursue purity until marriage, then give in to the lie that they're gonna do it anyways, people look at us like we have a third eye. When I say even on vacation, I get up very early in the morning to spend quiet time with God because he's my best friend. People just roll their eyes as if to say, really? but this is your one time to sleep in. Where's the kind of covenant keeping discipline displayed in the book of Ruth that says, your people will be my people, your God, my God. Where's the kind of dedication to the things of God that we say to our children attending public school? Honey, you talk about God, you lead others to God all you want and leave the separation of church and state thing to your teachers. Where's that kind of dedication and discipline? I pray that it's still right here on earth. I want my kids to do hard things. I want them to walk narrow paths. I want them to choose life and the things of God over anything that this dark world has to offer them. I want us to be the weird people that do things a little different because we want to please God. I pray that we can start to see a revival for the kingdom of God like we've never seen before. I pray that believers start acting like disciples who have a calling from God to preach the good news to the entire world. I pray that modern day Christ followers remember that what our ancestors had to endure to give us the sort of rights that we take for granted daily. 
I pray for revival, a revival of covenants, covenants of marriage and covenants of parenting. I pray that parents get some God-given courage to be their children's parents and not just be their friends. Our kids have enough friends. They need parents. I pray for the church to start looking like the bride of Christ and not so much like bridezilla. As we begin to love each other as brothers and sisters and we display unity, no matter what church building you worship in, I want to see people baptized, Bible studies full, women choosing to submit to their husbands and husbands loving their wives like Christ loved the church. Yes, I want to see revival. It's what my heart beats for. I want to see full church buildings with every seat taken in the sanctuary since every seat represents a soul. I'm fired up to see covenants renewed, people's minds renewed, and the bride of Christ watching and ready for the return of Christ. I want to see families standing up and saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm excited, y'all. I'm excited about Jesus. I'm excited about God's word. I'm excited about heaven. I don't know. Maybe I've just had too much coffee. I'm Mo Midlow with Unforsaken Women. For more on renewing your mind in the Word of God, visit us at Unforsaken Women or check out our website, unforsakenministries.com. I hope you enjoyed our program today. Let me just start off by saying that marriage is hard. Two people with two separate sets of backgrounds, likes and dislikes, sometimes values, and definitely differing opinions. Getting together and trying to live harmoniously, well, it's close to impossible. And without God being central, I think it is impossible. I've been married for almost 46 years, and we still have our challenges. We always will. As new seasons and relationships, health issues, and other challenges come across our paths, we have to learn how to navigate navigate changes. And change is never easy. My parents were married for 65 years and they even struggled from time to time. There is no perfect relationship on planet Earth. And just because longevity might be part of your story doesn't mean that it's been an easy journey, right? But here are three deciding factors in a successful marriage. Most importantly, God. Without God being central, I don't see how a good marriage survives. And then continual forgiveness. And I mean over and over and over again. Sometimes the same offense. And finally, commitment to each other. Being firm in your commitment to stay together through good times and bad. And the bad will come. Kingdom marriages are possible, but only through the grace of God and with lots of love, forgiveness, commitment, and work on our parts. Stay the course. Don't give up, particularly if you're in a challenging spot today. God can get you through another day. And that, dear friends, is our note of hope for today. Thanks so much for joining us, and God bless you.